It's so strange here. What town is this? Yesterday, I saw a moon in a well of shining clouds. It was so beautiful. Then suddenly, something fell. A girl, radiant and shining, with wings. She was in tears. Since she landed, she's been dashing around restlessly. Is she an angel? I call her Godsend. I can't tell what was a dream and what was real. But you'll tell me everything, right? <laughs> no, I have no answers. I thought that Ole might have been the cause of the battle girl, but I suppose it could still be the case, although she clearly doesn't know it. She does know some questions, though. If she's been staring outside her window for so long, then how does she know enough to ask me such questions? She heard of me. I was probably promised to her. She must have expected wonderful things. After asking all she could and learning nothing, I must be such a letdown. Teach me everything you know while I still have time. Tell me about this place. Is it true that there are other chambers nearby, and all of them are your creations? Is it true that we, the sisters, are your dreams, and the brothers aren't your doing? Is it true? You won't tell me? You can't? What a pity. Now it feels like she's mocking our ignorance. I don't know whether it's intentional or not. She's incredibly naive herself. But she's right to feel bitter about it, at least. I know I would. At least now she's looking in our direction, although with the same sleepy eyes that she used to gaze outside. She still looks so expectant, like a lost child. It's hard to drag myself away. I actually hope this is all a ploy. It would alleviate the guilt. Still looking. Anyway, here's the final room of the house. Outside you can see the doorway I went through from the attic to the roof. Not much else to see. Ole has a cradle in her room, as if she's been there since birth, although she never ages. Only the most basic sign that she's lived a life at all. Unlike Yanni, who had a life in a broken home. I'm not sure which is worse. And that wedding dress. Ever ready. Taking up an entire room by itself. A desire to grow up. To live. To gain in knowledge and wisdom. To meet her brother as a bride. And now it's just a dream. People who play this game themselves, first, second, third time players, all come to quite significant confusion at this point. I'm sure you can emphasize with them. Everyone in the game, the game itself, has been pushing you towards Ole since the very beginning. Her icon flashes on the map screen. Regardless of your expectations, you must think that it's going to provide some answers. But it doesn't. And it makes you feel disorientated, exploited, filled with so many questions you feel like you're about to burst. It almost feels like a complete lack of progress. The biggest, loneliest dead end that you can wander into, that you're expected to walk back out of, in search of yet more shrouded truths and misdirection. But lucky for you, you've got me at the helm, so I'm going to pick ourselves back up and keep on going. The only sisters I've got left to feed are Yanni, Echo, and the other travelling sister, if Echo didn't make her up. This mine should give me all I need to feed up Yanni, and then I can get the others on my way to building up enough stock to start the battles. Young one, do you think you can create by throwing Nerva into the world? It's an illusion. True creation 
is beyond us, young one. You're like a foolish child who wasted his father's precious paints on pathetic doodles. Who on earth was that? It was a female voice, but old and raspy. A sister... A, a, an old sister? We know they used to exist. Did they age because they were outside of the sleeper's protection? And if so, where? In the nightmare? In another limit, but still able to talk to us from where she is? She could be wherever the brothers are now. They're not in the void at the moment, but they can still speak to us. So is she a wanderer like Echo, or is she adrift on the fringe? How many like her are there? Having a look at what she actually said, she said true creation is beyond us. So, is she similar to me? Could she be another lost soul that didn't quite make it? There's no stipulation that says us devastators have to be male. Did she actually learn the truth, or is she just trying to drag us down with her? Acting Mrs. Noador to put us off. Will she speak to us again? How much energy does she use? How come she started speaking to us right now? Again, have the floodgates been opened? Or maybe she was just waiting until others started chiming in so that she could add her voice to the chorus and give it slightly more effect. But at least she said that we've been wasting our paints on doodles, which implies that some creation can actually be done. We've heard just as much from several people so far. All in all, it's been our last thread of hope. <sighs> so many questions, they're all starting to sound the same. Master Colour, when we entered Ole's chamber, said something at least slightly more definite. He said that the chain of limits was infinite. So once we reach the surface, that's not the end of it. And just the same, the nightmare is not the bottom. Which begs the question, what's the point of moving anywhere? Well, that's something that we apply to our lives on a daily basis. What's the point in succeeding at anything when it won't get us anywhere in the long run? Well, I'm not sure what to say without turning into an inspirational pamphlet. Maybe I'll just do that. I'm sure you've heard this stuff many times, but it's nice to occasionally hear it from someone you actually want to listen to. Hey, how's it going? Many people go through their lives as if it could be snuffed out at any moment, and whilst many construe that into making it all pointless, you can also say that you should try and do everything you can until then. Hey, I interrupted her for once. I don't need to be watched over. What's life but doing things that you enjoy? There's that cliché, oh look at me, I'm just playing games for the internet, how sad. But I never feel that. I like it and it gives me immense satisfaction, so in my mind there's nothing better I could be doing with my time. It's your time and time should equal pleasure. You're running out of time and putting yourself in grave danger. The sisters lured you into their web of lies and caught you. The brothers don't believe you and threaten you with death. Mistakes in your panic for color. What else can I do? How else can I help you? What can I do but help you in any way I can? Take all my color. I'm giving it to you. I can't go on like this anyway. Farewell, my dear. Take care of the void. Become its new soul. It's your home. Sister Death refused the colour and dissolved, losing her chance at eternal life. Why would she willingly give it away when it meant death within death? Every principle believed in the void has been torn down, not just because it was taboo, but because it was unknown of. The brothers are enraged and the sisters are terrified, not because self-sacrifice is possible, 
but because it is a premonition that from now on, this will be the only way. Sister Death is gone. She accepted her fate, and this is all that she could do to help. Everything has been stirred up, and I have a suspicion that the repercussions are going to centre around me. That's it. I'm done for now.